Good day, folks. Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel here in Nashville, Tennessee, with your daily devotional. I want to read again from Living the Message by Eugene Peterson, wise old sage and pastor who's gone home to be with the Lord now, talking about Scripture and Scripture reading and the way that we approach it, the way that we read it. So important for us. Uh, Matthew 13, 22, uh, Jesus said, the seed cast in the weeds is the person who hears the kingdom news, but weeds of worry and illusions about getting more and wanting everything under the sun strangle what was heard and nothing comes of it. And so Peterson goes on to describe a little bit about the way we perceive or the way we approach and perceive and hear the scripture. It is also important to listen to scripture in its double context, Peterson says. The context out of which it was spoken and listened to in Israel and Christ and the context of our listening lives. God uses the same sentence to speak different things to different people. This is because we are at different stages of growth. We know how this works in families. A father tells a story, and the two-year-old hears one dimension. The 15-year-old hears another, and the wife yet still hears another. They all hear the same story. They all listen accurately. They all respond differently but also appropriately. Since our contexts change daily, we keep listening to scripture daily. And you've probably heard people say this before, but scripture is one of those kinds of treasures of God's wisdom, um, of, of knowledge of Jesus Christ and of, of, of God's plan for redemption. It's so rich and so wonderful that it's like a, a, a flowing stream. And every time you step into it, it's, it's like a different, uh, you can see something completely different, even at the same spot. Uh, the water just keeps on moving and it's refreshed and refilled. And, and what Peterson is saying is that as we grow up and grow old, as our context in life is a little bit different, we hear differently. So we might hear the same verse that we heard when we were a child, and we might hear it just a little bit differently now. And it sometimes also changes, not just with the passing of time, but with our situation in life. Um, sometimes it changes when we're in pain. Um, we'll hear one way. And sometimes when we're our soul is flourishing, our life is going the way we want it to, we'll hear it differently. So it's really good to take stock of where you're at as you approach Scripture. It's really good to think about how you're hearing uh, and the, the, the context within which you're hearing. Um, Peterson goes on to say that our ancestors were a little bit more aware of this, uh, so they listened better than we do. He said they came before Scripture in a listening slash responding way, rather than in an academic slash manipulative way. Oh boy, <laughs> just called us out there, didn't he? Okay, <laughs> he's probably right though, right? Becoming familiar with their reverent listening stance before scripture helps us see the poverty of our students getting ready for an exam approach. And man, I gotta, I gotta fess up. That's that's me so often, you know, especially if you've spent any time whatsoever in a, you know, uh, higher education sort of setting where you're studying theology. It's so easy for uh, for God to become or, or the gospel just to become the object that you're studying um, as opposed to a heavenly father that you're interacting with, engaging with, um, as opposed to a Holy Spirit that you're listening to who is shaping and forming you, as opposed to a, a Jesus who's, you know, you, you can probably argue three ways to Sunday for the resurrection and, and for the veracity of the gospel accounts and the harmony of the gospel accounts on the res resurrection uh, accounts that they give and the, the, the slight variation of the details. You might be able to do all of the science of aspects of theology, so to speak. Um, and still miss Jesus altogether. May that not be so for me or for you. 
We're never exempt from the temptation to use and apply Scripture rather than submit to it and let God call forth things in us we didn't know were there. We have to be continually on guard. Our approach must be reading slash listening to Scripture, letting the Word use us rather than using the Word for our well-intentioned but still self-defined purposes. And I, you know, might add to that, going to it, wanting to hear something and 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 looking for that something that I so desperately want to hear myself because I want God to affirm something I want or I want God to rubber stamp something I'm about to do or whatever it might be. We can probably find some phrase in scripture somewhere that we think justifies what we want to do. And all of a sudden, what we're doing is using Scripture to justify our will. And it's no longer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. It's my kingdom come, my will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We need to rethink how we approach Scripture. And not to find ourselves sitting in authority over it, but to find it over in, as an authority over us. That we might see it as... Uh, as the psalmist did, Psalm 119, which is just a mind-blowing, it's the longest chapter in the Bible, and it's right in the middle of our Bibles, and it's so perfect that it's right there, and that it's the longest chapter, because it's all about God's Word, and how we are to approach it, and what a delight it is to find God speaking to us. Jesus said, the seed cast in the weeds is the person who hears the kingdom news, but the weeds of worry and illusions about getting more and wanting everything under the sun strangle what was heard, and nothing comes of it. Mm. Matthew 13, 22. That's probably a parable well worth exploring after you've finished listening to this podcast today. Let me pray for us. Lord, pray for all of us as we bow before you, that it uh, might be true that we hunger to hear from you. And when we open our Bibles, I pray, Lord, that we would do it with humility and with an eager hunger. Uh, speak to us, Holy Spirit. Give us a clearer vision of your truth, a greater faith in your power, and a more confident assurance of your love toward us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Daily Devotions with Pastor Jim Thomas is a resource of the Village Chapel in Nashville, Tennessee. If you find this daily devotional beneficial, leave a review and share it with friends and family. For more resources or to support our ministry, visit our website, thevillagechapel.com. Artwork for this podcast by Kim Thomas. Music by Phil Kagey.